To be very honest, these kind of problem statements seem very tricky in the beginning. You are given some kind of a grid and it has some components. Now you have to determine if a component X is connected to some other component Y through some other other means, right? Now this connection can be in any form. In this particular problem on lead code, count servers that communicate, this connection is determined if both of these components either lie in the same row or in the same column. And that makes things a little bit easier. Let us see how we can go about doing that. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will see how to read the input statement, how to understand what is given and how you can visualize it. Going forward, we will try to attack this problem in the most straightforward way we can think of and then we gonna try to optimize it. After that, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand and visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let us make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given a map of server center, right? And that is in form of a 2D array where 1 represents a server and 0 represents an empty place, right? So before getting any further, we need to understand what does this actually mean. And to understand it, let us take the help of a sample test case. You can see that in a test case number 1, I have a 2D array which is given in this form. Now you might wonder, how is this defining a grid? What do you make out of it? So to understand it, First of all, what you need to do is just visualize this array in form of a 2D array. So you would have rows and columns, right? So if you translate this array to an actual 2D array, what will happen is this first array, this will become your first row and your second array, this will become your second row in the 2D array, right? So you can see that now you have formed some sort of a grid where one is representing that a server is present Whereas a zero tells me that no server is present, right? And try to just lay out cables in this server center. So each of these cable will act as a row or a column, correct? So when I lay this pattern out and I put on my servers, what do I see? One represents a server and zero represents an empty space. Zero once again represents an empty space over here and one represents a server. So you can see how this layout is conforming to my actual input, right? So this way you can start to visualize what does your input actually mean. Similarly, let us look at our test case number two. We again have a grid that is formed of a 2D array, right? So this first array, this will become your first row and this second array, this will become your second row, correct? And once you map it out, you will get this kind of a server center, right? And you can see these values 1, 0, 1, and then 1, 1, and 0. So this actually defines what do you mean by this problem statement and how this server center is actually forming, correct? Now you can move ahead with the rest of the problem statement. So a server is said to be connected if there is any other server in the same row or the column. So you can see that this server has one more server in the same row, right? And this server also has one more server in the same column, correct? So this server is said to be connected. But in the first test case, you have this server, right? And if you look at this row, you cannot find any other server. And if you look at this column, once again, you cannot find any other server. So you will say that this server is not connected. So given such a server center, you have to tell me the total number of connected servers. So for a test case number one, you can see that this first server is not connected to any other server and neither is the second server, right? Because they don't have any connections in rows or columns. So for a first test case, zero will be your answer because none of the servers are connected, right? In our second test case, you can do the same calculation. You start off with the first server. You can see that this server is connected to one more server in the same row, right? So I will say that this server is connected. Similarly, for the rest of the servers, you can see that each of these servers are either connected by one more server in the same row or by one more server in the same column, correct? 
So for this test case, all of these servers are connected. And what is the total count? That will be four, right? So for second test case, four will be your answer. Also, there could be some conditions where some servers are connected, whereas some are not. For example, if you look at this test case, the green dots are representing the servers, right? So if I look at server number one, this is connected to one server in the same row, right? Server number two is also connected to some server in the same row. But if you look at server number three, this server is not connected to any other server in the same row or in the same column, correct? So for this particular test case, you can only find two servers that are connected. So two would have been your answer. Now, if you have understood the problem statement correctly, feel free once again to try out the problem statement on your own. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. Okay, now that you have understood how to interpret the input grid, you know how these servers are laid out in your server center, correct? So let us try to take up a bigger test case. This time I have this huge input array with me, right? And this array is defining how these servers are laid out in the grid, where the servers are present and how do the connections look like. If you try to lay them out, you will get a pattern somewhat like this, correct? So you can see that I have these values 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0 and so on, right? And these all match with my input values, correct? So this is how all the servers are laid out. And now I ask you how many connections are possible. What is the first thing that comes to your mind? You can see that, okay, I will start off with one server and I will check if I can find any other server in the same row or in the same column, right? So you start with the first server and you check its row. You can see that, hey, a server is present. So I can just mark that, okay, this is a connected server. Similarly, what you're gonna do is, you will start traversing each server one by one. Now you get your next server. Once again, you will check if I can find some other server in the same row, you can find this server in the same row, right? So once again, you can say that, okay, this server is also connected. What you will do is you will keep on going through this method for each server. So I land at my next server, that is server three, right? Now check its row. You cannot find any other server in the same row, right? And similarly, if you check the column, you once again cannot find any other server. So you can safely say that this server is not connected to any other server. What you're going to do is you will just keep on iterating and do the same thing for all the remaining servers. And once you have traversed the entire grid, you can just count how many servers are connected and ultimately you will get seven as your answer, right? Now this method is correct and it will give you a correct answer every time. But do you see the problem with this approach? The problem is that you are traversing the entire grid or entire rows and columns again and again. For example, when you have to check the connection to this server, what do you do? You first start that, okay, can I find any other server in the same row? You cannot, right? So now you will start looking at the columns and hey, you found a server, right? So you see how you're wasting some time? When we traverse through each row, for example, when I start at this server and I traverse the entire row, I am already seeing two servers over here and we never take any advantage of this fact. And that is costing us all the time. So we need to find some way that we can take advantage of this fact and come up with an even faster solution. Let us see what we can do about it. Okay, so once again, let us take up our sample array and we know that this is how our server center is gonna look like, right? Now, when we were solving the problem in the most straightforward way, what we were doing? We looked at an entire row and we were checking if we can find a server, right? But notice the fact that if in any row, we have more than one server. For example, if a row has two servers or three servers or four, if the count is greater than one, all of these servers will be actually connected, right? And same goes for all the columns as well. So what happens if we try to keep a count of all the servers that are present in a certain row and all the servers that are present in a certain column. Let us see what we can get by that. Let us start with the first row. In the first row, what do you see? You see two servers over here, right? So I will just record a count two. Moving on to the next row, I see only one server here. So just record a count one. Similarly, go on to all the rows. Similarly, do the same thing 
for each of the columns as well, right? When you look at each of the columns, column one has two servers, column two has two servers again, column three has just one server, and column four has three servers, right? So we completed one iteration of our entire grid and came up with these values. Now, how do you actually use these values? Just start traversing the grid now. If you look at our first server, you do not need to check the entire row again. Just check this value. If the row count is greater than one, that means there is already some server present in the same row. And you can just mark the server that this may be connected, right? So you can just keep iterating through each server and apply the same trick. Look at our next server. Just check how many servers are in the same row. They are more than one, right? So you need to include this server as well. Now move on to the third server. This is where things get interesting. Just check if you find any other server in the same row. You do not have to traverse the entire row actually. Just look at this value. It says one. That means there are no other servers. But there could be a possibility that there are any other servers in the column as well, right? So instead of traversing through the entire column, just look at this value. You see a value one. That means there are no other servers in the same row or in the same column. So you can safely neglect this server and keep on moving ahead with the rest of your server. And once you have traversed through all the servers, you can get a count of how many servers are actually connected. Now, let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how this actually works in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have a sample test case that defines the grid. And this grid is passed in as an input parameter to the function count server, right? Oh, and by the way, this complete code and its test cases are also available in my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. Moving on with the dry run. First of all, what we do is we have to visualize how this is actually going to look. So what do you see over here? You will have two rows and three columns, right? So we can get the rows and columns by this method. So grid.length will give me the number of rows and that will be two. And grid0.length will tell me the number of columns. So I will get two rows and three columns, correct? And that is what we see over here. We have two rows and three columns. What is the next step? We have to maintain a count how many servers are there in each row and how many servers are there in each column, correct? So I take up two arrays, row count and call count that will store the corresponding values. So what do we do next is we start a for loop that will traverse through each element in the 2D array, correct? And if we find any server, we increment the corresponding row counts and the column counts. So once this for loops are completed, I will be able to populate my row counts and the column counts. So in the first row, I will have two servers. And in the second row, I will also have two servers. Similarly for columns, in the first column, I have two servers. In the second column, I have one server. And in the third column, once again, I have one server. And these are the values that we just got in our previous step, right? Once you have found out these values, the next step is very, very easy. Start a for loop again and go over each of the server. What we do is if we find a server at any position, just check the row count and the column count for that particular position. If any of those counts are greater than one, that means I have one more server in the same row or one more server in the same column, correct? And if this condition is true, just increment the count of the server connections, right? And after this loop ends, you will have a total count of all the server connections. And this is ultimately returned as the answer to your question. The time complexity of this solution is order of M cross N, where M is the total number of rows and N is the total number of columns. And the space complexity of this solution is order of M plus N, because you need some space to store the total number of rows and the total number of columns and the corresponding counts. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that I know that grid based problems are a domain of their own. They can get very, very complex, right? But at the same time, it can help you a lot 
if you just try to visualize the problem and lay out all the components on a piece of paper. That will help you to understand and it might be possible that you can come up with a very very easy solution. This is certainly help you out. So while going through this entire video, did you face any problems? Tell me everything in the comment section below. Also tell me if you have encountered any other grid based problems and what solutions did you come up with? I want to discuss all of them with you. You would be also glad to know that a text based explanation to this problem is available on the website studyalgorithms.com. You can find the link in the description below. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also let me know what problems do you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya.